Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever and wherever you may be listening. This is Southern Gospel Point of View Podcast. And on the line, I've got Mr. Reggie Taylor from up in Sevierville, Tennessee. And then I got Mr. Keith Irwin from somewhere in Texas, I believe. But he'll soon be on his way to Sevierville, Tennessee. So, gentlemen, how are you doing? Very, very well, Brother James. Good to see you and Reggie today. Good. Reggie, how are you doing, sir? Buddy, if I was any better, there'd be two of me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, uh, Keith, it's good to have you. And I know we've struggled. We've we've rescheduled and this, that, and the other. And we've had all kinds of illness going on. You've had some of that, too. But, man, I am so glad that you're able to be with us today. And, um, you know, this is a podcast. And so, uh, you know, as soon as we get done, probably, I may go ahead and put it on. That way, folks can listen to it on the way to the National Quartet Convention. You okay with that? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That sounds great to me. And before I go any further, Brother James, I do have to show you my wardrobe. Uh, I didn't do it when we were free talking. So look at that. I got it. I wonder why you had the, the, the camera way down. Look oh yes. Up. See, I, I didn't want to uh, <laughs> to show it during the, the, the time we were talking before the show because I wanted to give it away. Big surprise uh, in the in the show itself. So, Brother James, for those of you who do not know, Brother James sent me this shirt along with a really nice letter, and I said, "Man, I'm gonna wear that during the show." So here we yes. are. <laughs> yes, I will send you your five dollars here next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh man, that is awesome, Reggie. I think you got yours on too, don't you? Right there, buddy. Yes, sir. There it is. Yes, sir. I had to be you a little bit different. It. I had a test shirt before we made the t-shirts. I put it on an old polo shirt. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wearing my polo <laughs> shirt. <laughs> well, see. listen. Work too. We just talked about um, going to the National Quartet <laughs> Convention, but we can't call it the National Quartet Convention this year. Hopefully next year we can, but it's the NQC Fall Festival. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, sir. I'm looking up the brochure right now. I'm trying to get it going with, uh, we've got a little brochure here that I've, I've been, we've been kind of dishing out all over mm-hmm. our social medias and, and I know, I'm sure you guys have seen it and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, just like, just like everybody else, um, the, the people, uh, Brother Clark and everybody that put on the, the National Quartet Convention, they had to acclimate to 2020. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think they've done a tremendous job uh, through the Fall Festival. And we are very excited uh, to be up there next week and to see oh, yeah. all of the uh, gospel music fans. And uh, also, I know most of them will be watching virtually on their laptops or television screens. Hey, but I'm just excited we're going to get to do something. And yes. uh, so we praise God for the opportunity. I know everybody on the board, especially Clark, was worried to death that that they weren't going to be able to do anything. But uh, I, I really think they didn't want to have to do even this. You know, they wanted it to be sure. just like normal. And that's, sure. you know, of course, that's understandable. But so how is it going to work as far as stage time and things like that? Will it be about the same, just with less people or, or with less Ooh. artists? From what I know, it will be about the same. Um, obviously, um, with a, it's a compressed schedule because of you know how everything's going. Uh, so we had just in our personal uh, experience, we had two song uh, slots, uh, two set lists. I think we were singing Tuesday and Friday at the National Quartet Convention. Uh, but with the Fall Festival, we have a one set list, and it'll be on Tuesday, which we completely understand. I mean, this thing. Um, you know, they're, they really had to throw it together and, and we couldn't respect them anymore for even sure. just for, for doing it, first of all. And secondly, the honor of us being a, even just a small part, one set list of this. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an honor and uh, we're just glad to be on that stage anytime we can. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so uh, I think they've done a great job. Like I said, they're acclimating. Uh, they're they're rolling with the punches of this year and what we're having to deal with with this pandemic. And uh, so, man, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're very understanding of everything they've had to do, and, and uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, man. I, I wish we were actually just up there a couple of days last week, and if I can sweet talk my wife, I may actually take a trip. Come just on. To, just to get away. Um, I'm not real sure how it is now. You know, usually we're in on a kind of a media pass, Reggie and I, and 
we've got another man, um, brother Jim Geary, that helped us out. But I don't, I don't know even if they're doing that this year just because of of uh, COVID. But I'm telling you, there are so many groups. The last time I was able to be there was 2018, and there's so many groups since then that have matured or come on the scene or have had changes i just love to be able to go and just enjoy i, I think it's going to be great even with the restrictions that are on it yes sir yes sir i know it will be and that's a good question on on how they're they're, they're dealing with the with the radio personnel I'm, I'm not i'm not exactly sure uh but man i'm sure if you uh if you make the trip i'm sure you know they could they could get you in some house to be in your with your credentials and everything you do that's right. That's right. Well, Reggie, man, you, uh, you're, you've been busy the first couple minutes of the show here. <laughs> like you've been traveling around and, uh, I don't even know what you were doing, but, um, work, working, buddy. I'm doing too many things at once. I need to slow down. <laughs> I hear you. So I, I go to you because there's something that's fixing to happen. I, uh, Keith, I live in America's Georgia now. That's, nearly as south as you can get wow in georgia and okay. reggie just came down I, I told you off the air that we just had to to do a funeral and uh, reggie came down for that but um reggie is the sports authority for southern gospel point of view like oh, wow. i have no idea listen i have no idea whether you shoot a um a football or if you pass I, I i have no idea i mean okay. i can i can fake it but if you start s spilling out stats and all that kind of stuff i'm out but this weekend <laughs> this weekend tennessee is going to be playing their first game and i think georgia is going to be playing their first game Correct. so my wife has already put in the menu chilies and we got to find some way to make hot tamales that's just what we do mm. but reggie are you ready for some football oh yeah yeah actually <laughs> right before we got on here um i have uh, three of my buddies we talk every single day about tennessee football and so right before we were jumping on here, I was talking to them because a friend of mine is wanting to do a podcast about Tennessee football. And he's asked me to be on this show a couple or a few times and um, to talk about it and stuff. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Football Ooh. is up my orange, my orange tennis shoes is in my Tennessee orange <laughs> tennis shoes is in there. My shirts are ready. My my shorts and pants are ready. Oh, we're ready. We are ready. We was just actually talking about the um, who's starting and who's not and who's out and who's got COVID. And I was like, I'm about over this COVID. Let's play some mm. ball. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. I hear that. Now, Keith, are you a you a football fan? I am a sports fan. I will watch badminton and cricket if it's on and it's a competition. Uh, I, uh, I could, uh, I, and that's not a knock on anybody that's going to be listening. That's a huge badminton or cricket fan. That's just, that's not exactly my most favorite sports, but uh, yes, if it's competition, I love to watch it and I can get in on anything. And uh, so, yes, I'm a huge sports fan. It is one of my passions. And so I keep up with it very well. I, uh, well, I try to keep up with it very well. I, uh, Listen to every podcast I can listen to. Uh, I'm, I'm a Texas Rangers fan, really all DFW. So Dallas Mavericks, Texas Rangers, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Stars, who wow. right now will be playing game three in the Stanley Cup final tonight. So very excited yeah. about that. Um, and then, of course, the Texas Longhorns. So we both root for UTs, Brother Reggie, that's right. just different UTs. And so, that's so right. that, that's, that, yeah, that's right. So that's kind of how it works for me. I mean, I'm a, farm system guy when it comes to baseball I go deep into that so like I'm and, and I listen to everything I can I can on my team so uh so uh yes I love sports to answer your question in a long form uh, let me tell you one Reggie I have never told I've that I know of I've never told anyone this but in 1999 we were moving to Tennessee from Florida and so before we did that I knew that UT was in Knoxville that's where we moved so I went online and and I wanted a UT hat. So I typed in UT, had no idea, no idea about it. 
And so I got a real nice hat that had a really nice orange ish. Oh no. <laughs> Longhorn on it. Yes, and sir. I, I was wearing it proudly <laughs> and uh, got up there and they're like, you're, a, you're a Longhorns fan. I'm like, what? No, no. And so uh, I'm telling you my wife though, <laughs> my wife, if it has a ball, she's going to watch it. We started really? watching tennis uh, last year. Yep. And, um, she, you know, she'd watch it when we'd go to bed and you'd hear those folks, you know, they'd hit the ball and, whoo, whoo. Yes, sir. And I'm like, you don't have to turn that jack off. I, I, I can't hardly <laughs> deal with this. And then I got yeah, interested right. in it. So, but. Oh, yeah. Anyway. All right, Keith. So, Keith, I got to tell you. Okay. Um, my wife is a huge Tennessee fan. Sure. Um, jo Josh Dobbs has moved on. He was our quarterback a few years and she loved watching Josh Dobbs. We loved him, and because he just he ran when he could get he get 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 us out of everything and and so forth. So, not last year, but the year before last, when last uh, year that Dobbs was here, I'm sitting in the living room and I'm watching the game, and I hear my wife going, "Oh, come on, come on," and I'm like, "Hey!" And I hollered. I, I knew she was in the bedroom, and I was like, "You okay?" And she said, "Yeah." I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm watching the game in here. I was like, okay. And uh, which I found out she was, you know, what I told she was doing, but she was doing some laundry and watching the game in our room. And so we were going back and forth. Well, my TV was a little fast, like a few seconds faster than hers as far as time. So every time I'd yell, she, she'd go, shut up. You're making yeah. it worse. You're making it worse. I can't see what you're doing. <laughs> Been there. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, around here, I hope the police don't come because I'm afraid every time they hear a scream, they think we're going at each other, and really, we're watching oh, yeah. Tennessee football. <laughs> oh, hey. hey, I understand, man, completely. completely. So well, in my, in my, I'm sorry, Brother James, I'm just going to put a bow on this. In my uh, experience, uh, which we can talk sports the whole time, I would be completely okay with it, <laughs> but I know this is not exactly why I'm here, but uh, uh, my experience, my wife is from Mississippi. She's uh, from North Mississippi. Uh, we served at her uncle's church and we still do. I mean, we've, dad, dad has been in evangelism for 46 years, actually wow. 47 years. And we, he always yeah. went up to North Mississippi to serve with, with uh, her uncle Ronnie. And uh, so that's how we met. Uh, she is a special ed teacher uh, right here in Edgewood. In fact, she's in the classroom right now. Um, and so, but she graduated from Ole Miss. And mm. so she's an Ole Miss rebel, and uh, that's where she got her degree. And she 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 grew up about thirty miles from there. So all of her family is are, are Ole Miss rebel fans. And so, mm. um, and so that that's something that I that I have to that I have to deal with, which is nothing like we play every year or anything. Uh, but but hey, I, I admire. I always say this. I think <laughs> it's the the right political uh, stance to say when your your wife is an Ole Miss rebel. I admire Ole Miss. And uh, I root for them, uh, you know, just because of her, which I believe is a smart thing to do as a husband. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so, so we are a house divided. Really, our whole family is divided. Uh, Dad, all his family is from Arkansas, so he's a Razorback. And uh, somehow, uh, some way, my ba the bass singer, my brother, my the middle brother, uh, is an Alabama fan. So oh, I, don't know, Lord. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know why. And I'm the number one critic of that. So rest assured, uh, it's a daily thing between me and him. And so, uh, and then Christopher <laughs> and Katie, they're all music all the time. They're all, I think everybody in our family meets at the TV for a Cowboys game. We're all Cowboys right. fans. Every that's kind of our our middle ground. Really, every professional team, me and Cody, and, and really all of us kind of agree with. But. That's kind of how we side on sports. So we're all different when it comes to yeah. colleges, <laughs> um, but we have a good time with it, man. We love it. Yeah. You so if you if you're a Cowboys fan, what who who do you? All right. So there's a team that all Cowboys fans hate, but this team hates all Cowboys fans. I mean, all, all Cowboys. Who is it? Do you know? Well. I would have to say, Brother Reggie, to answer that question, you would have to be it would be, it's kind of a generational loaded question because uh, my grandmother, mm. uh, who is my grandmother, yeah. uh, who has a, a, a been a cowboy fan for seventy, I mean seventy years, uh, thinks it's the Redskins, and uh, because well, of the, the time that, the time that that she spent, so so that's kind of a generational question. Uh, to me, it would not be the Redskins, 
to me, and, and honestly, it split, again, because of my wife. It split between the Eagles and the Giants, and I, I would side with the Eagles personally. But, like I said, with the Giants, uh, my wife's an Ole Miss fan, and, of course, they don't have a professional team in Mississippi, so they just – just automatically root for their players. Eli Manning is the most well-known professional rebel. They have been a New York Giants fan um, my whole time of knowing my wife's family. Mm -hmm. And and I and that's another critic for me. I mean, I, I really critique that to each every one of them. I, I, I have to reiterate <laughs> how far culturally this, the city of New York City and North Mississippi is away from each other. Yeah. And I just have to think, listen, I mean, you guys, that can't happen. But I understand. I under I understand. You know, it's their it's their boy. So so to me, it's a little even more different than what you would imagine me answering that question by just because of that. Uh, so it's a, a split between the Eagles and the Giants for me. Well, see here, um, here in ten, well, in this general area, if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, you can't stand the San Francisco Forty ers mm, Yep, that's well, another, if you're a yep. forty. If you're a 49ers fan, you don't like Cowboys fans. Well, my one of my good buddies, and um, he's a he's my son's coach, and I'm the his coach of foot or of basketball. But he is a huge Cowboys fan. Wow! So we rub it in each, we rub it in each other's face all the time. Because see, I'm a I, I, I'm a Niners fan. I've, I've been a Niners fan ever since I was a kid. I just love their colors. I don't know what it was red go or maroon and gold. And, I, and that's what I fell in love with. Then I knew who Joe Montana was, Jerry Rice, all that stuff. Well, when Kaepernick came along, couldn't stand him. So I was like, I'm finding another team. <laughs> I can't I can't pull for him. When he left, I was like, all right, Jeff's good. And so we're, now I'm back on the Niners fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good, man. That's great. I understand. So – Keith, let's let's get back on on track. I opened up a huge can of worms there. I didn't know it was going to go like that I way. Like I said, man, I will I will talk sports all day long. <laughs> I did. I do <laughs> see that that Ole Miss is playing Florida this weekend, and that's so right. at some point, I'm guessing that's going to be on the bus, right? Uh, probably, uh, maybe just to check it. My wife is having to stay home on this uh, uh, okay. nine day trip because of her classroom. And so we won't be watching it, but I will be keeping up with it. Um, okay. As long as it's competitive, I do not believe it will be competitive for very long. Uh, but I will be keeping up with it as long as it is competitive. Uh, okay. Well, All I right. do got to, I got to, I do got to jump in here. T, does your wife like, um, oh my Lord, what's his name? The new coach, uh, Oh, um, yeah. Uh, Lane, Ki Lane Kiffin. Yeah, Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin. Yeah, she does. She does. My wife has so much love for the university, and she doesn't – and I think she would tell you this. We have this conversation often. She doesn't go as, as far as I would go with my team on the stats and, uh, you know, the day-by-day -day performances, you know, and week-by-week -week performances and, and how this play happened, that play happened. As, and, 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 you know, the real dramatic plays and the game-changing plays she will, but – me, I go through the second and nines, you know, the two-yard runs. I mean, I'm that type of fan. And so, it, Lindsay probably wouldn't do that, which she would tell you. Uh, and so, but, but like the stuff that's loud, oh, we got a new coach. You know, yes, she, she likes – she's that kind of fan. And, uh, and she, she likes him. And, uh, you know, for me with Lane, uh, I don't know where he's won uh, <laughs> consistently. Uh, I, I just there's – not, there's not much of a consistency to me. He's more of a, of a name without a whole lot of backing to it. Uh, and I know because of his family and stuff that kind of happens with Monty and everything. Uh, but but to me, you know, he's it, it, he's got to prove himself to me. I'm not an Ole Miss fan, but he's got to prove himself as a college football coach because he hasn't done that really as a coach at all because he was with Oakland and didn't win there. So, uh, and I know you're speaking uh, as a Tennessee fan, so I know you've got some pretty uh, pretty probably some brash uh, emotional com conversations we could have about Lane. Uh, but, uh, you, might wanna, me, you might want to keep an eye on him after the games, make sure yeah. he doesn't run out of town. Well, like I said, I, 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 I'm glad he's not – let me just say it like this. I'm glad he's not my coach uh, because I, I, I just wouldn't – because he just hasn't proven anything. So, yeah. he can recruit right. because he's a good name. But I, I'm getting really deep into sports. I'm sorry. I can do it. I go right to it. <laughs> So does so does Reggie. He's he's all yeah, about it. I do too. Yeah. So Keith, yeah. we'll we'll change. Hey, we'll change phone numbers after this, buddy. We'll just call and talk sports. Let's do it, man. I want to be on your sports podcast. Get me on there. I'll be the okay. first Southern Gospel oh. artist to be on your sports <laughs> podcast. I will do it. Yeah. You're the first Sign one. Me up. You're the first. Sign me up. One. You're the. I got you. Yes. All right. Good deal. That's awesome. <laughs>
There, there's you an exclusive right there, uh, Reggie. There you go. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> so off air, Keith, you and I were talking about um, a new album uh, that the Irwins have just recorded. Um, you told me there's there's a new release fixing to be released from that, or I, I already have it, so I, I'm guessing it the release is there for us. Um, yes, sir. But tell us a little bit about your new album and what's going on with the Irwins. Well, we have, with obviously the pandemic, uh, that's been kind of put kind of a wrench in all of our plans. Uh, we were supposed to be in the studio in March and then obviously, no, I'm sorry, April, and that was canceled. And then we were supposed to be in the studio in June and that had to be canceled also. And we finally got in the studio in August. Uh, and so we were able to, to, to do enough songs for actually two projects. Now, one will be coming out very soon. Uh, it's going to be our table project with uh, some covers on it. It's going to be called the Irwin's. Uh, favorites on repeat and that will be coming out um, I, I believe in November at some point okay. uh, and so that will have uh, some songs really six of the seven on the project will be songs that a lot of people have heard most people have heard and the other song uh, will be a bonus track that we're really excited about uh, and so uh, and then of course we have a mainline record that will be coming out in the spring that we've already done vocals for in fact all of our sides oh, done wow. the photo shoot side and everything is done uh, but that will be the mainline project and it will be out somewhere, I believe, either late spring, early winter. And so we really are excited about both projects. But the one that will be coming out uh, soon uh, will be that Irwin's uh, favorites on repeat and uh, really excited. In fact, we're going to do one uh, radio release off of that record, which, as you said, is already released to the DJs. Uh, and so we're really excited about that song. The song is called Nobody. And yeah. uh, most of you all know that from Casting Crowns. Uh, one of my favorite groups of all time and one of the most insistent uh, yeah, groups when it comes to a career and what they've done. And, and uh, they are the real deal. I've been around them a little bit, Mark and all of them. They're tremendous Christian people and right. they live what they sing. Uh, that's kind of a side note, but I had to do it because they, they, that's just who they are. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it doesn't surprise me that they cut a song like that, that, that Mark and um, oh man, my goodness. What is the uh, other person that wrote that song that Matthew actually sang West. the song with them? Um, Matthew West. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, Brother Matthew uh, West actually helped write Mark write that song, and I think they might have had another writer. But yeah. anyway, uh, no surprise uh, to, to see them write that song and, and to have that. So Bernie Herms was the third. Yes, one. yes, that's right. That's right. If I'm saying so, his name right. <laughs> that's the, You did. You did. And, and that's such yes. a – that song – it doesn't matter. You know, I told you, I'm not a, a huge CCM fan. But if you listen to that outside of that kind of critique, that song has got a message. Oh, man, it. it's powerful. I mean, your, your dad, correct me if I'm wrong, he is a pastor or was a pastor. He's in the ministry, right? Yes, sir. He's in the ministry for 47 years now. He's always been an evangelist. He has never okay. pastored. Um, he's always, in fact, he, he traveled by himself uh, 17 years before he even met our mother. Uh, right. He was called to preach. He was called to preach at the age of 20. And he didn't even meet our mother until he was 37, didn't get married until he was 38. Wow. Uh, so, so he was by himself traveling uh, the roads all across the country by himself. He thought that God was just going to mm -hmm. allow him to be, you know, single, Paul, yeah. uh, his, his whole, whole ministry. And, uh, and he goes under a tent revival in Mesquite, Texas, East Dallas, and uh, meets our mother. And, uh, and so long story short, they get married. And then we just uh, continually stay on the road with him throughout our whole childhood. And this is all we've ever done. Yeah. Well, then, you know, many times, probably from the pulpit, either him or some other preacher or someone testifying, has mentioned those words. I'm just a nobody trying to tell somebody exactly. about or everybody about somebody that can exactly. change. Them. And for these cats to put that in a song with with such a catchy tune, man, it, yes. it really is a message that does span like we've we've noticed. There's been a few other groups that have released that. It has spanned different genres of music. And I listened to yours last Wednesday, maybe. I can't remember exactly. I'm blown away. I'm yeah, absolutely blown away. And um, I didn't record uh, a new radio show last week because of the, the death in the family. But it will definitely be. I've I've been playing that song every week for the last four weeks, I think. 
by a different group. <laughs> so, right. so I'm going to definitely put you guys on there because people need to hear it. Yes, it doesn't sir. matter who you are, what station you are in life or in ministry. If we forget yes, that sir. we're nobody, but we're trying to tell everybody about somebody, it's all about him. He said, if I, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so it's all about That's him. Right. And I love that song. And you guys did a great job. Amen. On it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for playing it for James. Absolutely. So October, November is when that album will be available. Right. Yes, but sir. Now, and help me with this. And this, this is a podcast. So we can talk about whatever. So help me and Reggie. Cause we don't, I don't, I don't know it. If you've already recorded the, the vocals, and you've already done the artwork and everything, the photo shoot for your next album. How does that work? I mean, there are so many things that I guess could change in that. When do you start on stage singing those songs from that new album? Do you have to wait until it releases or gets close or what? Well, digitally, in this day and age, you, you have two different releases, basically. You have the street release, which is the hard, hard copies, and then the digital release. Um, and so, usually, with every uh, Stowtown release that we've done, I believe this is our sixth now. I can't, well, fifth or sixth. I guess the main line will be the sixth, and this main line, uh, this table project will be the fifth. Um, usually, uh, the street release will be a little earlier. Um, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, the digital release will be a little earlier, right. uh, just because it's easier, you know, they can put mm -hmm. it on, on iTunes and they can just flash it out there. And, uh, but, uh, there have been times, uh, where we will have the hard products on the bus with us. Um, and, uh, and if we have them and, and we'll do pre-orders and that's how kind of that'll work. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so, so we, yes, to answer your question a long form, and I do apologize, we, we do sing those songs, uh, before it is released just to try to okay. get. Uh, really mainly for us for a whole different kind of you know for a lot of reasons mainly to learn the song mm -hmm. uh secondly to 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 know where we should put it in a concert set list you know to right. feel you know feel out and see see where what what happens and what, what where we need to put it mm -hmm. um because we do want to you know ultimately be at our best for christ and we want to we want to you want to give the the best uh sure. product you know in his name uh, that we can give and so we're trying to get the, the best concert put together so we would we would sing those songs to to learn them and to learn where we need to put them in a concert um and uh, see where they where they go and where they don't and uh, throughout a concert so listen we really enjoy that process you know it's it's good to it's good to, especially new material man you know you go two years oh, yeah. singing singing the same songs same which song. are awesome you know and there yeah. and we will be singing we will continue to sing those songs but uh, it is good to, to have some new material, and I think every artist would feel the same way that, mm -hmm. that it's always fun to sing new songs when they're available. Yeah. So you mentioned just a little while ago, and Reggie, if you have something, just feel free to jump in, buddy. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just talking. But you mentioned a, a little while ago about COVID, about the pandemic, and, and I realized just like churches, groups have been locked down. You know, we, we've talked on previous shows about men that have had to make a choice for their family and leave the road and take a job. And some are, are doing that, but they're still making themselves available for their groups and things like that. The whole dynamic of Southern gospel ministry really has changed or, or, or life in general has changed. But what about you all? Have you seen, or you explain to us if you can, how has that really affected you as far as your travel where you can minister, how you minister, uh, you know, crowd sizes or, or what? Um, great question. Um, first of all, I mean, it's affected us on, on a level like everybody else when it comes to our schedule. Uh, I've heard and a lot of our peers have done uh, just a handful of dates, you know, really between March and, and August. I know for us and I think uh, and a lot of our peers, I do believe, thank God, things are starting to open up in the, in the last month or so. Um, and we pre and you know we you know we praise God for that, um, but really between March and and August, which was six months, you know it's it was uh, we did I think we did twelve I think we did twelve dates mm -hmm. uh, in that whole time. So just a couple of month, a couple of months is what we really did. A couple of church services a month. None of them were concerts. Uh, they were really just Sunday morning gatherings, yeah. uh, which consisted of. Um, I would say half and half, um, probably three quarters actually outside 
uh, where we did call it kind of a called a drive-in service type right. of a thing, uh, to where we we set up a stage, we sang on trailers, we sang on uh, just on, on on the driveway, whatever we could do um, uh, to 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 sing and, and, to, and to serve, and, and those twelve concerts, or twelve church services. I mean, um, and so I would say around twelve um, of that, and uh, and I'll, I kind of a, a a lighthearted thing. Uh, after those six months, the last week of, of August, really between the, the last week and the first week of September, uh, we did uh, nine concerts in ten days. So right after, wow. right right after the uh, you know twelve concerts in six months, we did nine concerts in ten days, which was great. You, you know, yeah. you know, because we we were excited to be back on the road, and and we probably needed it to knock the rust off. Right. And, uh, and so, so, so yeah, man, it was different. You know, we, we didn't like it to be honest with you. Obviously you do, you're doing what you're doing, you know, you've done for all your life and our experience. Um, and then you don't do it, you know, for, for, mm -hmm. for a long period of time, it's tough to, um, uh, it's tough to feel comfortable in that aspect. You know, we love to be home, you know, me and my wife are, are kidding. Um, you know, in the, in the, in the time that we were home, we have never been, uh, together this much. In our five years of marriage, yeah. we have never done it, and uh, so so just walking our our neighborhood together, at, uh, you know, around dusk every, every night, and and just uh, eating supper with her every night, uh, very very awesome. There have been a lot of great positives that have come out of this, sure. and I'm, I know that you guys could could attest to that, and really anybody. Um, and there's a lot of good things that have come out of this. Obviously, I know we know a lot of people are hurting. I would never uh, degrade that. I know this is a true a real virus, right. and I know that there are a lot of people hurting. And uh, we've been praying for many of our friends and peers that have dealt with this. Um, but like I said, we, we do praise God because we do know that this was his will. Because we right. do believe that he was in control of this Amen. all. Yeah. And, uh, and, and nothing is caught in that COVID in 2020. And with all of the political discord and the racial discord that we've been dealing with and, and, the, and the, uh, the, this virus, the pandemic and everything, none of this has caught him by surprise. That's right. And uh, I just want to give him glory for something Amen. that we would think is bad. That's right. But but I'm thanking God uh, for it because I yeah. think we can do that because I think He can teach us a lot through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When when we came out, uh, our church when we came out uh, of the quarantine, the in well in in May, there was such a longing to be back in church from of of our folks, and you know we just kind of like, I think you mentioned or somebody along the lines today mentioned you know, of having to sing to a camera or in my instance, having to preach to a camera sitting right here in my office and, and preaching and then having to watch it on a device. It's just, it's, it's daunting, you know, um, you, the neighbor's dog starts barking and you're watching that instead of watching the preacher or you're sitting there in your pajamas and you got your coffee cup and it just don't seem like church. And we were so excited to get back to church and through all of that, what Joseph's brothers said to him, you know, after, after everything at the end of the book of Genesis, all of the things that we've done to you, we're so sorry. And he said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Absolutely. And a lot of people are blaming this on, on the devil, but I don't want to give that to the devil. I think God no. has put this here for a reason uh, I think one reason you mentioned it to bring husbands and wives together, to bring childrens and, and parents together, to bring churches together more. Though we can't really meet the way we want to, there's still a longing, kind of a like Reggie and I. We we saw one another. What was it, Reggie? Friday or no? Um, Sunday and Monday. That's the first time we've physically seen one another in months if not over a year and mm. there was just i'm a baby okay so i'm probably gonna cry <laughs> but no, you know i mean you can look at reggie and you can tell he's not something that you just want to look at but <laughs> brother Keith, i just <laughs> grabbed him and air hugged him and cried i'm like man it's so good to see you yeah because there's been such a distance and and if if for no other reason just having that longing for fellowship of god's people Sure. I think it's been worth it. I Absolutely. really think it's been worth it. Absolutely. And uh, it's given us, like you were saying, it's giving us a new appreciation for the, right. the, the body of Christ and what we have when we, ha when we were together. 
Yeah. Uh, but also, I should. I, I want to point out this, and I, I've seen this on a personal level, uh, and I understand what you're saying. Please understand that I know, you know, watching on Facebook Live is something I've, I'm not comfortable with. I want to be in church. My favorite place right. on earth to be is in God's house with his people. That's right. But I will tell you this. Um, I think this is another thing that God has done through this is take these churches out of their comfort zones in a lot of aspects yep. and taking their services on social media places, uh, you know, different, different avenues and, and presenting their service and ultimately presenting God's word and the gospel yeah. to people that would never darken the door of a church. That's right. Uh, and so, and that, that's, that's been an amazing blessing that I, that I think we should all remember. Uh, because I, I don't know about you, but I know there are many churches that we serve in that a year ago, they have never even no. tried Facebook Live, right. any tried kind of a live stream format. And there's right. some that still didn't and, and shut down everything. Listen, there's no judgment there at all. We That's understand right. every church did it differently. I completely understand. Uh, but at the same time, I do appreciate that a lot of these churches, you know, sat down. There was there had to be some kind of meeting, mm -hmm. most of these churches and said, listen, you know, this is how we're going to have to do it. And we're going to we're going to have church one way or the other. And ultimately, we want to get the gospel out. And and I'm thankful that that some people, you know, had to do something that they weren't, you know, they didn't think, you know, they that was going to be their ultimate, you know, thing they were right. going to do. But they, they had to do it to get the gospel out. And I appreciate that. And I thank God for it. That's right. Amen. Um, now. Let us revisit. Yeah, let's revisit the National Quartet Fall Festival. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Do you have any announcements or surprises or anything like that that you're going to be making during the NQC event? Because sometimes artists wait until then to make announcements. So, I mean, you may say no, and that's fine. So you don't have to make anything up. <laughs> Man, but, that was such a great intro, and I wish I had something. I wish I could just make <laughs> something up. Uh, I got I guess two I, Okay, what's up? You, you just got two new best friends, man. There Jamie you go. I like it. I like it. There's the, I will do it. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I mean, I guess a lot of – I guess the new information that we'll have, I don't know if it's necessarily breaking news or surprise because we're kind of slowly – getting it out there is this new project that's a big deal uh -huh. um and, and we're really excited with the set list that we're going to be singing tuesday uh we'll 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 have a few songs on um uh we'll be singing a few songs off of that off this new project and so you know that's that's going to be something that's fresh on our minds and something that we will be uh, uh talking about a lot in our uh, times of interviews such as this and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would say that you know um and obviously Another thing we would say is, you know, we're back on the road. So praise God yeah. for that. And we're getting to see people. And, and uh, so that, that's a huge thing for us. And so uh, I, I can't think of any, any breaking news uh, thus far. <laughs> now, I know in the past you've done a lot with Joseph Habedank. Um, and he's, he's been pretty influential in, in the ministry there. But is there, is there a, um, an artist or a group that, that you are looking forward to seeing or hearing or spending time together next week? Man, we've got many friends uh, in, in, in this industry. And uh, I, I, my, here's my thing. Okay. So I love, I like to say, I love giving long answers to short questions and I apologize. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but we, I'm the type of person that I could really find art in a lot of different ways. You know, there's some people that have really, there are strong preferences like, you know, I don't necessarily like listening to them as much as I would like them or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not that person. You know, honestly, I can find, I can appreciate and find others' appreciation right. in a lot of different artists, and especially if they're doing it for the right reasons. If they're singing the gospel, I can, I can, That's I can, right. yeah. I really can. I like them all. Uh, and not only that, but, but I, every, I mean, you know, I, I love talking. I love fellowship and I'm a people person. And so yeah. I'll probably be the one after I'm done talking to people at our booth to walk around and fellowship with, with our, with my peers. I so appreciate uh, the, the legacy uh, of the men that are still doing it that we grew up listening That's right. to. Um, and so, and I love talking to them. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, the Wisnets, Austin and Ethan Wisnet, Jeff and Susan's two sons are, are very, very close friends to us. Uh, me and Cody were in Austin's wedding and Austin uh, was in both of our weddings. 
Uh, and so we're like best buds with them, with both of them. And so we're going we're gonna to get together and play golf with them. We're big golfers, and we always play that, that foursome there, those two and me and Cody. And uh, we Eagles always win? go – is well, we no, we go to Gatlinburg. Uh, we love okay. Gatlinburg. Uh, we played uh, – Reggie, I think, is fixing to wreck his car if he's driving. Uh, we have, <laughs> I'm not driving. We, uh, okay. I'm not driving. We have uh, – we uh, uh, we've played that Gary Player design course over there on the north uh, west northeast side, somewhere over there past Gatlinburg. I forgot what that course is called. But those are the only two – those are the only two courses, real tight course. Uh, only two courses that we've uh, that we've played out there. We love. Actually, I'm sorry. We have played Sevierville because one of my favorite singers of all time, King, uh, King Arthur, Arthur Rice. Oh yeah. Uh, is uh, is he he? They actually work out there uh, from time to time on a part time basis. Uh, and so so we've played uh, one of Sevierville's courses. They have two 36 holes there, and we've played one of them. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, I play, we play golf all the, uh, over there. So yeah, excited to see them. I'm a huge, I, I mean, if I had to pick favorites as far as the groups going back to your question, and again, Brother James, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Collingsworth, I mean, they're, they're, they're just, there's nobody they're yeah. second to none. I mean, I, I did their work ethic, uh, their, their brilliance on stage when it comes to stage presence and their sound and their, uh, it, they're the whole package and they're, they're incredible. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that because they're label mates with us. Uh, you know, I would I would say that to anybody. I, it's pretty well documented if you ask me and my family. They're, they're oh, yeah. really one of my favorite groups, the Martins. I love the Martins. Um, I think uh, they do more with the, with the most, with the littlest, I yeah. guess you could say, yeah, with I them agree. traveling, with, with them traveling without a sound. You got to think about this. Uh, with them traveling, never with the sound system. A group that sings the most acapella music in our industry, you would say, and to do it in the highest quality, I would also say, without hesitation they never travel with the sound system or a sound tech obviously they do dates that have sound techs but when they go to churches and stuff they are at the mercy of really? churches and their I sound had no systems. idea yes wow it's them three and they travel and it's them singing and they just grab the mics that are on each stage they go to and they just sing and i'm That's telling dangerous. you dangerous uh I, well it's very dangerous they've got more <laughs> faith than i do i promise you but but and just just so so those are just a, just a couple of groups I will tell you this, to, and I'm almost done, man. I promise I'm almost done. Uh, I, I, will, I will tell you this. Uh, the, one of the best segments of the national, and I've been to every year uh, that I can remember that I've been alive. Uh, I believe we started going in 96. I was four. And so something around there. The best segment I've ever heard at the National Quartet Convention was last year. And it was, uh, it was Ernie Haas. It was this little segment. Ernie Haas, Joseph Habedank. Greater Vision, Collingsworth family, and the Martins, and they were all bam, 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 and 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 they're all great. They're all usually great, mm -hmm. but that night, that night especially, and I don't even. I think it was a Friday night. I don't know. Somebody could correct me on that. That who's been there, but uh, that night, that the sets were the most powerful sets I've heard individually of those groups, and they were all back to back to back to back. And uh, it was a night I'll never forget. And uh, and so I'm praying for for that type of thing. I just sat in the back crying most of those sets, and. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, I, 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 like I said, I love it all from, from, from the Martins to the Primitive Quartet, you know, and the McCameys. I love them all, and uh, I'm, we're just honored to be on the same stage as each and every one of them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Reggie, you got anything? I got another question, but I'm going to give you a shot. You've not hardly said anything. Because I'm about to burst over here because the funny thing is, is I saw your hat, and it's, it, it's a tightless hat. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Because at the end of this whole thing, I was going to go, all right, so you, do you play golf? And if so, when you come to National Quartet, are we going to go play golf? <laughs> oh, I'd love to. Uh, we play. Hey. But, you know, we, we love to do it. <clears throat> um, I'm actually wanting – I was wanting to play Saturday at Sevierville. And uh, we were – I'm trying to get some guys together to go play at Sevierville Saturday – I try to play on every Saturday morning, so I'm like play, trying to play. Um, but if you want to play golf, you let me know, buddy, and I'll just take a day off, and we'll go oh, during the man. week, and we'll go to Sevierville. <laughs> oh man, I'd love to. I'd love to. That that week is so crazy. As you know, I mean, I'm not telling you that week is so crazy. Uh, we usually try to. We we usually can only pitch in one game. Usually, it's just maybe even nine holes. And you know, ten years ago. And, and the position that we were in 10 years ago, we, 
especially with Austin and Ethan back then, even they weren't doing as much as we were doing mm -hmm. now. God has kind of, you know, put us in a different position and we praise him for that. But as far as the, the recreational things that we used to do at Cortec Convention 10 years ago, man, we played golf every day. Me and Austin and Ethan and Cody. Uh, and, and now we're, we're, we're really, you know, lucky if we could get uh, around in. So it's such yeah. a crazy, crazy week. Uh, but but that, that's kind of the thing we always try to do them for. And, and if we if we get an extra, you know, an extra day, man, are you going to are you going to be there or do you live in that area? Or I, I live, honestly, I live 10 minutes away from Sevierville. Uh, Sevierville do Golf you Club. really? Well, I'm going to yeah. get your number, man. If, I, if we have an extra day, I will. I will look. I will. I will go play. You do not have to twist right. your arm very much. Me and my brother. Both. <laughs> Me and my brother. Both. That's, that's awesome. Hey, I do have a question. How is Katie, Cody, and Chris doing? How y'all? I mean, as as a family, how you guys? How are they all doing? We're doing great. We're doing great, brother Reggie. Um, you know, it was it was made public, and and you know, we we all knew it. We all had COVID. We had it uh, the last week of July, uh, and uh, and and we are we all uh, thank God we all came uh, out of that okay. Uh, everything uh, like it was really equated to more of a sinus infection uh, to most of us. Uh, we had we had sung in a in a in a, in a church service uh, the week before, and uh, and and we were exposed to it then, and mm. and so we actually um, we actually um, let me let me see what because I, I want to get it right. Dad was exp Dad was tested positive on a Monday, and Katie and Chris were tested positive on a Monday, and I was around uh, as many people as they were, so I was tested on Tuesday, just knowing that I would probably been exposed. I was actually tested negative. And so I was like, well, that's interesting. And so Thursday, two days later, comes around and I'm starting to have some symptoms. And uh, I just thought it was a sinus infection considering that, you know, I was tested negative. So I was like, you know, whatever, here we go. Sinus infection, that's okay. Uh, and so, and then I lose my taste and smell and I'm like, okay, still sinus infection. And mine, and I know it's weird for everybody else, mine was actually in stages. Like I, I was feeling achy for two days, lost sense of taste and smell. And then I was, uh, uh, and then I was coughing. And then a week after I'd ran my first symptoms when I ran fever, it took me a week. Hmm. Uh, and so, so for me, I didn't know really, that's kind of what pinpointed what this was that I had a false negative test, yeah. but, but every, every symptom that I'd ran up until the fever, I figured it was a sinus infection. So there, right. was, some time, there was a lot of time there, which is kind of dangerous, which I, I was wearing a mask everywhere anyway, just because we, we still do really, cause it doesn't bother me that much and whatever, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, to each his own on that, but right. it doesn't bother me. So I just wear them. Um, and so, and so, so I was wearing it. So I, thankfully I wasn't exposing anybody and I still haven't heard of any, any exposure that I, I, I you know, I made happen. Um, but yeah, so my wife had it and, and thankfully and she, and she's pregnant by the way, I haven't, we haven't talked oh. about that. We're, we're, oh, so, great. But well, yeah, that's awesome. And we were really watching, we were really monitoring her because we have some right. friends that have been pregnant that had actually had to go to the hospital just for oxygen. And so thankfully her condition uh, never got any, any actually, uh, it was less than mine and mine wasn't that bad. So I think we ran fever for a day or two. Wow. Uh, now dad, yeah. uh, with his age, uh, we, we put him on hydroxychloroquine, uh, and he had some, some, we had, he had a couple of days where he had some minor symptoms, really bad aches, really all he had, he had a fever, I think a day, but two days after he got on hydroxychloroquine, it went away completely. There was no symptoms whatsoever. Wow. Uh, and then also my grandmother went to the hospital twice. Uh, she was exposed from us going to see her and she lives with us. Uh, she went to the hospital twice. Uh, we were late to putting her on hydroxychloroquine because of her other uh, medications she was on. We didn't know how they would mesh. But finally, after we got the okay from her doctor, uh, we put her on it. And within two days, and I'm talking she was in the hospital, within two days, it was gone. No symptoms whatsoever. So before wow. I do anything else, I do want to say uh, what I'm saying right now, and uh, we've, we've talked about this with our PR people in our ministry, uh, people in our record label. Uh, and we, we've okayed with all this of what I'm saying, because this is not a political statement to me. Yeah, sure. uh, to me, we saw it, we saw it on our doorstep, you know, it happened right. with us. So, so, you know, regardless of my political stances and everything else, uh, you know, if I'm sick and if my family's sick and uh, if, if, if something that could cause death, as we have seen, yeah. uh, I, I don't think I'm going to watch the news to see what I should endorse uh, medication if it works. Right. Uh, and so, or who endorses it? So that's just how I look at it. Uh, it's it's so far from politics for us. 
uh, mm -hmm. we're just uh, we're just thankful that it worked and uh, we praise God. Right. Like I said, we, I didn't even take it. I didn't even take it. Um, and uh, because of my, my conditions really weren't that bad. Thankfully, we have a lifelong friend uh, who is a doctor that was able to prescribe it to us. And so dad took it uh, and my grandmother took it. They were the only two that did that had to. Everybody else was really mild symptoms. Uh, thankfully, uh, my, our mother, Tiffany, did not get it. She has really since November, she has been in her bedroom. Uh, she has a highly uh, compromised immune system. Oh, wow. Uh, she had a long story short, she has rheumatoid arthritis. She has had to take chemotherapy for years now mm. before her rheumatoid arthritis, mm. a small dose of chemotherapy. And so that uh, has really been detrimental to her immune system, as you can imagine. And so we've really watched her. Uh, right. I mean, when, when Chris and dad and Katie and Mimi uh, all had it, they were in the same house as mom. And my aunt was living with us and she was taking care of all of them. And oh, so wow. praise God, praise God. I mean, she was bringing them food and everything. Praise God, uh, mom made it through that. We were really watching her and uh, worried about that, really praying about that. Um, and then my aunt who was taking care of everybody as they were in their beds, um, uh, she never got it also, which is a huge blessing considering mm. she was also taking care of our mother. I don't know how that happened. Even Cody, our bass singer, his wife and his two little girls, they never got it. They were exposed as wow. much as we were. Uh, to the same uh, people. So, you know, there's some trivial things, which I know you guys have probably heard some of the same stories or some trivial things about this that honestly, I don't think we'll ever know. Mm -mm. Um, you know, so right. a lot of these things uh, and a lot of experts will never know. And I think a lot of the experts, if they have common sense, will tell you that also that yeah. there are some things that they will just never know about this thing. And, and I think it's just to where we can just have our faith strengthened mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, just uh, we appreciate uh, the medication that dad and, and Mimi got. And uh, like I said, regardless of all of the, uh, the other things that were said about the certain medication, uh, it worked. And uh, that's all that we care about because that's we're right. appreciative of, of its impact uh, in our family. Absolutely. Right. We, we had, uh, my wife and I both had it as well. Our symptoms were like yours. She had more fever than I had. But I've said over the last several weeks, if you line 10 or 100 people up in a line, the effect of COVID on them. I'm talking about yep. people that actually contracted it. Every one of them is going to be different. Absolutely. You, know, you, you might I've have a few also. of the same symptoms, but you know, you know, I was up walking and I started running, um, trying my best to get in into shape. She was laying in bed, you know, Wow. and wow. We both, we both started at the same time. And so it's just crazy. It's just it is, man. Yeah. It is. And, uh, and, and that's kind of how we, I guess my worst symptom was to taste and smell because I like to eat. Yeah. I lost 10 pounds in 10 Oof. days uh, just because I didn't want to eat. I mean, if I can't enjoy what I'm eating, I'm not going to eat uh, yeah. as much as I would normally do, obviously, enough to just to make it to the next meal. But, but I would, uh, man, it was tough. That was the toughest thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not making light of this. I know there's sure. a lot of hurting people and, uh, and, and we, we are praying for them. Uh, and, and, uh, but, but like I said, uh, we're thankful that, that, that we've made it. And, uh, and I also want to say this, there are a lot of peers, uh, in our genre, uh, that, that have had it, that maybe mm -hmm. have not been as public as we are about it. And we completely understand that, sure. uh, because we know that, that eat to each his own. Like I said, it, we, there's no judgment. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's handled by, you know, each ministry, each household, even, even further than That's the right. ministry. And, yeah. and so we, we have so much respect for how each group handles the situation with this virus, if they have contracted it. Uh, and so that, that's just how we've chosen to deal with it, to be public. And, uh, and that, that's just how uh, we feel like is best. And, uh, and so that's just how, it, how it's been. I got you. Well, I had it. Hey, I'll tell you right now, Keith, I had it too. And, um, uh, I lost 20 pounds. My soul. 20 pounds. Now I found it all again, but I lost hey, it. And then I found, found it, my but... <laughs> 10 back. I found my 10 back. Yeah, I understand, but, man. But out of all of this and all the COVID we've been talking about, um, there's a good, and now everybody's better. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. We're all, we're okay, all good. better. Yes, sir. Out of all that, there is some joy, joy that comes out of it. And that's you are getting ready. Are you, is this your first baby? First baby. First You're baby. You're getting ready to be a daddy. That's You're right. getting ready to be that's a daddy. Right. Yes, sir. We're very excited and just praise God. We're over the moon with excitement. And uh, 
Uh, I've got two little nieces that live 100 yards from me. Me and Cody, uh, the bass singer, we live in the same little subdivision. We have homes in the same little subdivision here in our little town. And so I'm really close to my nieces, and uh, I get to see them all the time. And I don't know how I could love uh, any little kids better more than I do them but I've heard that, that that's just when you're when it's the, when when he's your own you know when, when it's, you when it's your own out. child uh, that's just how it is and so man I, I we're really excited and uh, we're expecting a you know a healthy baby come December that's awesome good and, you know December 14th no well December 21st you're a week a week early which back at well no we're gonna get it here earlier <laughs> okay is that your birthday <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, that'd be fine with me, man. I'd be fine with December 14th. In fact, we, we were, and honestly, this is a joke, so all the listeners kind of take this lightly. As long as, long as it comes, as long as the baby comes before January 1st for tax purposes, I'm good with that. You know, I don't, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just like, that's yeah. a joke. Uh, but anyway, hey, you know, the truth was said in jest. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, no, the 21st really of excited. The 21st of December is my daughter's birthday. Is she was it really? supposed to be born on the 25th. And we begged oh, the doctor, soul. please don't do that to us. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, uh, my grandfather was born on Christmas. And so instead of getting him like one regular soap on the rope for his, for Christmas, we would like double the size of it or get him two soaps <laughs> on the rope. Like here's one for your birthday. Here's one for Christmas. It was horrible. Yep. Oh, oh it was horrible. Lindsay's so, grandfather. Lindsay's grandfather actually is. Uh, he was born on December 25th, and so which he, you know, he's very easygoing, even keel, sure. and so it's never bothered him. Uh, I, uh, but 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 yeah, we're praying for that same for that same thing. <laughs> we honestly do want him uh, to to arrive, uh, you know, as early as he can. Obviously, within the confines of being health, healthy, we're praying for that. Obviously, yeah. but so you know, know it's would, a boy. Uh, yes, we do. We do. In fact, we took a test uh, pretty pretty early. I think within twelve weeks, we we knew um, the, the 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 gender uh, just because Lindsay has her family history has a lot of uh, history of cystic fibrosis. Okay. And there's a there's a test that you a blood test you can take uh, to test the, the blood and in, in the baby to see uh, it, it check that you can check that really early these days, which is a great form of of the technology mm -hmm. we, that we have now. So. Uh, you can check that. You can check the chromosomes, see if everything's good there, and and also the gender. And so we were able to to see really early uh, that it was going to be a boy, and, and we're really excited about it. Praise that's the Lord. Awesome. You got a name? Oh, that's been World War Three, brother Reggie. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> that's been a that's been a, that's been an interesting uh, that's been an interesting situation. I th I don't know if it's because of culturally, you know, she's from North Mississippi and I'm from East Texas, and some names she likes I don't, some names I like she doesn't. Uh, but, uh, we, I, we, we've got a front runner and, uh, I, I will, I will tell you a front runner and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the one and, uh, I'm going to be a good cowboy fan and, uh, and it's going to be right now it's Landry Thomas Irwin is what it's going to be right now. And so, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's the front runner. So All right, I've got it. Wrote, I got you. I've got it written down. I'm going to follow up with that. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You might, you may, you may, you probably should actually. Uh, hey, listen, that, that's an awesome <laughs> name. It really is. I, I don't know yeah. that I've ever heard. Well, I mean, I'm not a sports guy, so I can't, can't yeah. say anything. I'm sure it probably is, but, <laughs> but, uh, hey, if you really name. want a good name, if you really want a good name, you Smoking. could name him a cat. <laughs> no, but that's a good name. <laughs> But it could be a Cowboys and a Tennessee name all together because he played for the Cowboys and he played for University of Tennessee. My favorite Jason, Cowboy. Jason Witten. Yeah, my favorite Cowboy of all time, I will remind you. I have his jersey in my closet right now. Uh, <laughs> there and I you will go. tell you that I have I, – I, I might or might not have uh, – talked about Witten, uh, but it, it, it didn't go very far. It didn't go very far. So. No, I understand. All right, yeah. so let's let's do one more question. You got just a couple more minutes, Keith? You sure, absolutely. Okay, Reggie, are you good? Just a couple more minutes. So yeah. I, I kind of thought about this and, and I know I know that some of the younger group, like I'm forty one, Reggie's forty, forty one or so. Um what well, you were born, what, ninety two, is that yeah. right? Yes, sir. So, you know, you're you're a little younger than I am. Okay. You're a little younger than Reggie. 
So maybe of that group, of, of your age group, maybe even a little, you know, give or take, if you could start a Southern Gospel group, who do you think you would put in there? Hmm. Well, the political answer would be the group I have now. <laughs> uh, which would be my siblings. Uh, but we're not here for politics, so I That's will. Right. Uh, I will uh, oh my goodness! Um, I mean, my generation—you've kind of put it, kind of put a little smaller box because there's a lot of guys, you know, you know. Because I watch a, a show on Golf Channel, Faraday. You know, he talks about your favorite foursome. You know, he talks about mm -hmm. if you were going to go play golf with somebody. That's multi generational. A lot of people say Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, right. or whatever. Uh, so, but as far as my generation. Uh, Joseph Habedank, I would say, uh, would be would be a, a solid lead. Uh, uh, I would say Riley Harrison Clark would be my mm. tenor. Uh, I would say, which he is he is around my age. He's really close. Um, and so, um, oh man, bass singer. That's uh, where I'm. There's not a whole lot of young bass singers mm -hmm. because you know that's kind of a thing you have to you have to gain the depth, yeah, grow the, into the it, mass <laughs> yeah. and stuff. So, oh man, okay, uh, Anthony, um, Anthony, why is my mind not working? What is his last name from Tribute? Um, man, I. What is his? What is? His, oh what Lord, is, yeah. Um, here, I'm gonna look it up on my phone. And Anthony, if you're gonna watch this or watching, I apologize, dude. My brain is so messed up. Anthony Davis. So how does that? Yeah. How do I not? Uh, <laughs> anyway, Anthony Davis. Uh, I'm gonna put his name there uh, because uh, a lot of people say we look alike. So he's a good-looking fella. And uh, no, I'm just playing. Uh, anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I I'll put I'll put those three, and I'll try to sing a little baritone. Or do you want me to give the baritone? How did you want me to do that? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking you can get in it, but if you've got somebody that you might be your sub, uh, Scotty Edmund. Okay. All right. Man, that's a tough. That's a tough one, man. That's a good question, and I feel like I'm letting uh, a lot of people down, uh, especially <laughs> if I'm in the group. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I, I wanted to ask, uh, we had Brian Walker on a couple weeks ago, and, and I really wanted to ask him, but we, we got sidetracked, and it, it never got back around to that. But, man, I sure do appreciate you. And, Reggie, I don't know where Reggie is at, but – I got a chat on the Zoom group chat that said I have to run and check my email. Be right back. So that's, oh, okay. that's understandable. Well, I thought the rapture happened or something. And I, we got yeah, left. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I'm not going to keep you any longer. But man, I sure do appreciate it. I'll send you Reggie's number too, so y'all can get together, Please. maybe. And uh, I know that he would, he'd love that. But Keith, thank you so much for for being on. And I hope you're. I think you're leaving out, hitting the road tomorrow, right? That's correct. Yes, so sir. Guys, We're going to go to East careful. Tennessee. Yeah, there's Reggie. Uh, there, brother Reggie. Be careful and. Um, <laughs> We'll be praying for you on the road, but also at the NQC Fall Festival. And uh, if it's all right, I'll probably, maybe later tonight, I'm going to go ahead and post this. I'll tag Absolutely. you in it. If you can, please Absolutely. share it. And let me tell you, let me show our our um, our viewers. You know, we've all got our shirts on. So, That's yeah, right. look at that. But That's check exactly out, right. Check out my new mug. Look at the mug, man. That you know people, don't you? made for me. That is oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> I, actually, I did it, but she coached me. So I see, I yes. see. That's a good one. Well, and hey, I've got a white. Pleasure. I've got a white one. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I've got. I, I've got a white cup, and so it's all good. Yeah, you guys. It was, <laughs> it was my pleasure. To, it was my pleasure to do this and to talk to you guys. I'd love to do it anytime, and uh, uh, I'm gonna get your contact information, brother Reggie, and I expect an invite for that sports podcast. And, uh, yes. and, some, and, and a tea time, too. You thank go. you, listeners. Thank you so much for, for enduring and hopefully enjoying <laughs> the show today. And uh, I appreciate Keith Irwin of the Irwins, Mr. Reggie yes, Taylor, uh, my cohort up in Seaverville, Tennessee, a.k.a. Sevierville, Tennessee. Uh, but until next time, guys, this has been Southern Gospel Point of View.